tired of playing the same old pentatonic licks every time you go to the local open blues jam? Well, here's five licks I want you to try the next time you go. Coming up. Welcome back to the channel, I'm RJ Ron Kilio. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. So every guitar player, me included, goes through phases where they kind of fall into a rut, you know, kind of rehashing the same old licks, uh, not coming up with anything new and fresh. Well, I'm gonna hopefully pull you out of this rut and kind of shock your creative mind a little bit. I'm gonna show you five not so ordinary blues licks that you can try and possibly impress uh, everyone at your next jam session. All right, I'm gonna play each lick at normal and slow speeds and then over a backing track by my good friend Quist, whom you should follow, so you can hear what it sounds like in the context of a tune. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about it and maybe give you some tips. Tabs will be at the bottom of the screen and a link to download them will be in the description. Also, if you wanna come back to this video and practice again, there's gonna be timestamps in the video description so you can jump straight to each lick. So we're gonna be doing these licks in the key of A or A dominant seven, so like an A blues. But you can transpose most of these to any key. We're gonna be primarily working around the first position uh, pentatonic area. Okay, here's lick number one. So it starts with this pattern right here, which kind of comes from Dorian. You can think of it that way. So pull off, eight, five, seven on the second string. And then we're gonna do that same pattern, but down a half step. And that's gonna give us that outside flavor, that really kind of outside jazzy uh, part of this lick. You can also, if you want to get really into jazz theory, you can think of this lick kind of working over like an E7, like the five chord of A, and then quickly jumping back to A again. So that the lick ends with a very common blues uh, descending lick, just on the blues scale, pentatonic blues scale. So the first couple notes is where the uh, altered E sound comes from. And then bring it back right into the blue scale. Which is something that I do a lot. I like to step outside just for a little bit to just hint at jazziness, but then step right back inside to pentatonic blue scales. Here's lick number two. So it starts on a half step bend on the seventh fret, second string. So you're hitting the seventh and bending it up to that G note. And then I'm quickly releasing it. As soon as I release the bend, I do this pull off to seven, five. And then a quick slide down to four. So the whole phrase goes like this. And while this note sounds kind of altered or outside, that's actually the blue note of a, you know, minor pentatonic or a blue scale. 
I, I think just because it's combined with the uh, this note, it sounds unnatural, kind of sounds altered because we're used to hearing that note in the in the context probably of. Now we're adding this 13th note. It sounds more jazzy for some reason, I don't know. So, bend, half step, release, pull off, slide. And then that's kind of just normal Dorian. a minor triad with a Dorian flavor to it. And I'll slide up to that last note with my first finger. Here's lick number three. Okay, so this lick kind of starts normal, but then it hits you in the face with uh, this big slide into a bend, which I'm kind of a fan of doing, um, you know, playing kind of a stock blues lick. Uh, and then instead of playing that last note that we all expect to hear, play something different. And what I'll do is I'll, a lot of times I'll slide up and try to hit a, a, a correct note or a note that fits the scale. But here, we're actually targeting the uh, 15th fret on the second string. So we've all probably played that little partial of a lick uh, before. But instead of hitting that eighth fret bend on the second string, we're gonna put our finger down on the eighth fret and then slide and hopefully land on the 15th fret. And as soon as we get there, as soon as we know that we've hit that note, we're going to bend up a full step. So that's probably the, the one thing you want to practice with this lick because it's such a big slide. You kind of have to nail, nail it. You know? A lot of times when I'll do this lick, I might come up short and do... Uh, where in that case, I'll have to adjust my fingers or bend extra... Uh, big. So just practice that part of the lick. And once you get that nailed pretty consistently, then we're doing this from the bend, we're releasing and then a quick pull off. Here's lick number four. Okay, so this lick is quite involved. So we start off the lick with a common four note riff. But here's where it gets interesting. So 
While we're holding this bend, we're gonna use our right hand to tap on 15 of the second string. Now from there, we're gonna release that bend. So you're hearing these two notes. And while we're releasing that bend, we're going to bring our left hand up to the 13th fret, second string, and pull off our right hand, our right finger. And then, we're going to do a half step bend with this uh, 13th fret note, and then tap on the 21st fret. And give it a little vibrato with our left hand. I mean, you could do vibrato with your right hand, but I like to do it with my left hand because it's kind of more controlled, I think. So I'll try to do it slow. Um, it's kind of hard to do uh, without maybe a compressor or a little bit of gain, so, and it's also hard to show slow because it really um, shines when it's played a little bit fast. And here's lick number five. Okay, so with this lick, we're really just gripping one chord voicing, and it's you may have played this before, but if we go to A, it's kind of this uh, A6 or A13 chord. But we're only playing uh, the first four strings, so it's... So if we take that voicing and move it up to the 11th fret, 11th position, that's where our starting point is. And we're just moving this uh, chord voicing to different frets. All of the notes that you're gripping under your four fingers uh, fit within either a blues scale or a, um, or a mixolydian scale. So it's basically a harmonized lead line, if you want to think about it. If you're thinking that's the lead line, you're kind of harmonizing under, under it. So it starts with a slide to the uh, 11th position. Then we move it down to the 10th position, a half step. And then slide up to that exact position. Slide down a whole step to the 8th uh, position. And then down to the 5th. So you'll notice that these four uh, positions, just holding this uh, chord voice and, uh, work across you know a blues scale a blues progression so it's a nice uh, harmony to remember you could even go down a whole step from a and do that slide but back to the lick I think the hardest part of this lick is uh, sliding a chord. Because for some people, some beginners, some intermediates, that's uh, a weird feeling. So you'll have to get used to, you know, these big slides holding 
four notes. But it's definitely a cool little blues lick. There you have it, friends. There's five licks that you can try the next time you go to a jam session. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, share it with your friends, family, somebody that plays cowbell. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, gear demos, behind the scenes footage, click that subscribe button. I'm RJ Ronquillo, and I'll see you in the next video.